made it to this video or found this video, that means you are interested in learning how to tie um, an oboe reed blank properly. So let's go ahead and just kind of jump right into it and go over what you're going to need. So if you watched my last video about um, selecting cane and shaping, then you will have a piece of shaped and folded cane um, that needs to be soaked. So if you've already shaped it and it's coming straight from there, cool. Um, if not, if you shape a bunch of these and then have them in a box and kind of at your discretion when you wanna tie, um, just make sure you soak it in some warm water for 20, 25-ish minutes or until it sinks. So you need your piece of cane. You need an oboe reed staple. I use um, 47 millimeter Sierra tubes. Um, these are one of my favorites. You will need a mandrel and a mandrel that fits your staple, okay? So sometimes you'll see um, mandrels that the metal part will go up through the top of your staple. You don't want that to happen. It can cause your side not to come together when you tie and cause leaks. So you want your mandrel to fit your staple really, really well. So mandrel, staple, you'll need a ruler so you can properly um, tie at the right length. Um, and this is in millimeters. You will need a C-clamp or something that you can tie on. So you put this on the edge of the table and tie your thread to it, okay? You need a fun color of thread that is required unless you are the type of person that um, ties like your entire uh, box of reeds tan and they're all the same and they're just dull and boring. Um, to me, you just hate fun and happiness and that's so sad and I'm so sorry. Um, but also maybe not, um, but I just think, you know, make it fun, choose a cool color. I like rainbow colors, makes life more exciting, especially when you're sitting at your read desk. Sometimes it can be exhausting. So, you know, spice it up, choose a rainbow or a neon color. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you do, put your mandrel on your staple, like so. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line this up. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it, just kind of both sides here. And I'm gonna take my ruler, and this is a Caleb minus one shape, so Typically kind of around 73 is where we want to tie it. So you want to be really precise with these millimeters. Um, common issues with tying blanks are the blades are slipped the wrong way. So if you are right-handed, the blades just slip to the right. And if you're left-handed, they should slip to the left. Another common problem is having leaks by, you know, under tying or just not getting the sides to come together when you start tying. Um, over tying basically chokes the reed. Imagine like wearing a turtleneck that's way too tight. It's going to be hard for you to speak. So think of that for kind of if you over tie. And when I say over tie, I mean you can see the, I can't find the camera. Where is the camera? Okay. You can see the tube on the side here. If I tie above that, okay, and you'll see here that's going to really choke the vibrations on. So I'm going to pull the reed about, you know, a few inches away from the C-clamp. Kind of let me move this up here just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to do one wrap. This is kind of getting the sides to close. So you do, I do four wraps up. So what I'm doing is I'm watching right now to make sure that my blades are aligned at first and on the staple correctly. So I'm kind of rotating it, looking, and I'm really monitoring both sides closing. So you can kind of encourage the blades to slip the way you want them to just by how you kind of put it on the staple. So you can kind of give it a little bit of ease up on the tension a little bit with your right hand and then shift it around with your left. The coordination of tying takes a little bit. Okay, let me kind of went down a little bit. 
Okay, so finding it. This is difficult to do when I'm trying to do this on camera. Okay, and I'm gonna do another one once I feel good about that. And I'm really watching each side. I'm trying to make sure that they're both closing at the same time. So you see me kind of like adjusting and moving my finger around. I'm trying to get the blades to go the way I want them to go. So that I've got, I'm gonna unwrap there for a second, just to, there we go, sides are closing. And I got one more up here. Okay, looks good. From here, I'm gonna do the crossover. Common issues with the crossover are having them cross over on the sides. Okay, we want the crossover to be on the flat part, the flat side of the blade. Um, the crossover, if you're confused, that's okay. The crossover is just, we're gonna go over these wraps that we've gone upwards to the top of the tube, and now we're gonna start wrapping all the way down. So how I get the crossover right on that flat side is I roll in really close and I want a lot of tension here, a lot of tension here. We do not want looseness at this point. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get my thumb like really close in and I just kind of place it right where I want it to be. Okay, so got that crossover. I like that this is rainbow because you can see it really well. Then I do a couple of wraps. Okay, now this next thing that I do is just to make sure that it's not crooked. So I can kind of look at it straight on here and see if it's crooked or not. It's pretty close, but if I really want to kind of figure it out, um, you can kind of see. If I hold the mandrel down like this, you can kind of see down, and it takes the ears out of the equation when you're kind of looking down. So see that a little bit so I'm gonna do it from my side but I'm just gonna look down and if it's a little crooked I can use one finger to kind of move it around here once I've got that now it's straight then I can just start wrapping all the way down okay keeping it tight on both sides I make sure I get to the the bottom of the cane, it's all wrapped, and then I usually start doing my knots a couple millimeters above the cork. Everyone has their own way of doing knots. I have this kind of quick loop way, but people have different ways of tying their knots on their reeds. Okay, so I did that. All right, so I've got my blank here. And we, okay, yay. So I've got my blank. Don't rip it off. I've seen people kind of rip their reed off the thread when they're done. That can undo your knots. It just makes me nervous. So, um, I mean, that's what you do. Live on the edge. It's fine. But that's just, yeah, not for me. So I take my little sewing scissors and I just cut off the strings there. Okay, so I've got this. Now, I'm not going to leave it like this. Okay, I don't want to leave it like this. So let me switch camera angles here to kind of show you. So when you tie this, I do not like to leave my blanks in my case like this. Okay, the reason being is these ears, okay? You can kind of see that there's a little bit of like open space right there. The ears kind of prop the blades open, so I always, always take off the ears kind of like how we were shaping earlier just put it against the side of the reed do that take them off okay and now you can see those openings are gone next thing i'll do is you know it looks good but it's kind of flared out a little bit i just want to kind of take off that little bit so i'm gonna Put my mandrel through and then I just take this and I'm not laying it like flat like that. I'm lifting up kind of just towards the, the just the ear part. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of sanding, get rid of that extra material. 
and just kind of check in. Flip to the other side. Okay, well, there we go. Looking good. She's so cute, right? Look at that. Now let's go ahead and check if we've got any leaks. So let me switch angles here. All right, so we got our blank that we just tied with the ears off. Let me check if it's leaking. It looks fine. Looks like the blades are kind of tending to want to split, uh, slip the right way, which means when I scrape it and clip it open, the blades are gonna wanna kind of lock into that overlap that we want. But let me just go ahead and see here. So I'm just gonna blow through. Okay, I don't feel or hear anything. So this is a steel trap. This is a good blank. So I would feel comfortable letting this dry out now. Um, put these in your case after they dry out. You can tie a bunch of these. You could sit down and have, you know, do 10, 12 of these in a row and just have them in your case so you always have a read available to work on if you're kind of in a bind. Uh, something that really works well for reed making is always having reeds in different stages kind of going, kind of like a conveyor belt, as so you have one coming off, you know, every day. So I'll tie two or three a day. I'll move another one into like kind of my scraping uh, day two phase the next day. Um, I'll have one that I clipped open that I'm working on. So I always have reeds in different phases going all at the same time. But these are something that you can just knock out pretty quick as long as you're, you know, doing it correctly. And you'll get faster at it the more you do it. It's, it's muscle memory and just, um, just having that coordination ingrain itself through repetition and consistency. Uh, reed making is all about making a lot of reeds both good and bad, often. Eventually, the more you do it, the more good reads you will put out, but uh, read making is just something that you just have to keep doing and trust the process, and I promise if you're just doing it consistently, you're getting better, okay? Um, so, I hope this helped. Here's your read blank right here. Okay, notice it's not clipped open or anything, but this is called a read blank. And let me know if you have any comments or questions. Um, and there should be more videos to follow in the coming weeks. Thanks.